This video was brought to you by TLDR Socials. Follow us on Instagram and on Twitter for coverage of stories like this just earlier and as they happen, as well as explainers that never make it to YouTube. The link is in the description. In the last year, energy supplies in the UK have been going bust at an alarming rate. So far this year, seven suppliers have gone bust, affecting more than a million households. And that probably underestimates the severity of the problem, because a whole load more companies are begging the government for a bailout. The UK's sixth largest energy company, Bulb, is currently one of those, with four smaller companies all expected to go bust in the coming days as a result. To give you a sense of how severe this problem is, back in January there were 70 energy suppliers in the UK, but industry sources reckon this could be as few as 10 by December. So why is this? Why are so many energy companies going bust? Well, it's down to two things. One, the UK's shortage of energy supplies, and two, the UK's energy price cap. Let's start with the shortage of energy. Essentially, all you really need to know is that the UK is particularly reliant on wind and natural gas for its energy generation. In 2020, wind provided 25% of the UK's total energy mix, while natural gas provided about 32%. This means that the UK relied on wind and natural gas for about 60% of its energy production, which was well above the European average of about 30%. Unfortunately for the UK, there's been a serious lack of both wind and gas at the moment. The UK has just been a lot less windy than usual recently, with wind energy currently producing just 7% of the UK's total, down from 25 and that issue is compounded by a global shortage of natural gas, in part thanks to cold winters, which has meant more consumption. Europe has been struck particularly badly though, because it relies heavily on two countries, Russia and Norway. On average, Russia provides about 33% of Europe's gas, and Norway provides about 20%. And unfortunately for Europeans, both Russia and Norway have suffered production problems. Gas flow from Russia to Europe through the Yamal Europe pipeline fell to just 20 million cubic metres per day in mid-August, according to the ICIS, down from 49 million cubic metres per day at the end of July. And even that was a sharp fall from its usual rate of 81 million cubic units per day. Gazprom, Russia's state-owned gas utility, claimed that this was due to a cold winter in Europe, but some have suggested that Russia might be restricting its supply of gas to Europe deliberately in order to pressure them into approving Nord Stream 2, the controversial proposed pipeline that would run from Russia to Germany. Norway has also suffered production problems though. Norway's output of natural gas in June totaled 7.9 billion cubic metres, well below the Norwegian Petroleum Directorate's forecast of 8.55 billion cubic metres. And these factors combined forced Europe to look towards the international light natural gas markets. But high demand in Asian countries like China, Japan and South Korea had already pushed international LGN prices sky high. All of this together translated to a 200% increase in UK natural gas prices over the last six months. This has also created some downstream problems for other industries in the UK. Two fertilizer plants have shut down thanks to the high gas prices, which has limited the amount of commercial bottled CO2 in the UK. And that's important because CO2 is used in a lot of food manufacturing, for packaging and for keeping stuff fresh. And this shortage is threatening the UK's supply of both meat and fresh produce. The final problem for the UK is that they can't really rely on other power sources either. In accordance with its net zero goals, the UK has seriously cut down on its coal-powered energy generation. The UK's coal plant capacity has fallen from 23 gigawatts in 2011 to just 5 today, with only two power plants at West Burton A and Ratcliffe on Saw still on the wholesale market, although two officially closed units at Drax are still running for system support. And things have been made even harder, especially in Europe, by the fact that carbon credits in Europe's exchange trading system are relatively pricey at the moment, which makes coal power generation even more expensive. The UK's nuclear energy generation is also struggling, with unplanned shortages at Hartlepool and Hailsham 11, both reducing capacity from 8 gigawatts to about 5. 
So you get the point. The UK relies heavily on natural gas and wind, both of which are in short supply at the moment, and it can't really rely on coal or nuclear to make up the difference. Anyway, all of this has made wholesale electricity prices in the UK shoot up. Wholesale electricity prices are the ones that energy suppliers pay for their electricity before they sell it on to the consumer, and they've risen by about 700% from their five-year average of about £45 per megawatt hour to 424 on September 14th. They have stabilised somewhat, with the latest data from EPEX putting it at about 115 per megawatt hour. But as you can probably see from this map, it's still way more expensive in Britain than the rest of the EU, especially when you consider that £155 is about €180 Euros, and way more expensive than the UK average. Anyway, you get the point. Energy suppliers are paying a lot more for their electricity. To understand why they're going bust though, you need to understand the UK's energy price cap. Essentially, to prevent energy companies from overcharging customers and guarantee price stability, the UK has an energy price cap, set by an independent body called the Office of Gas and Electricity Markets, or Ofgem. Currently, the cap is set at an average of £1,138 per year, but it's going to be raised to £1,277 in October. Nonetheless, this is still apparently too low for some energy companies, who can't turn a profit with that cap when wholesale energy prices are so high. The next official review is in April, which means that it's looking like there's a tough six months ahead for energy suppliers. Anyway, that's why electricity suppliers are going bust. They've been squeezed by high wholesale prices and the UK's price cap. But what happens now? Well, when energy suppliers go bust, Ofgem just moves their customers to another, usually bigger, supplier. These bigger energy suppliers, already squeezed by high wholesale electricity prices, are insisting that they'll need financial help from the government if they're going to take on new customers. The government basically have two options then. Remove the energy price cap and expose customers to the higher prices reflective of the global market, or bail out the energy suppliers with taxpayer money. The UK's business secretary has ruled out scrapping the price cap and said that the government are considering state-backed loans to support struggling energy companies, but nothing has been finalised just yet. They've also ruled out the prospect of another three-day week, as happened in 1974 under Edward Heath. For those of you who don't know, in 1974, a strike by coal miners limited the UK's energy production. In response, the government implemented a so-called three-day week, which meant that people only worked three days a week in order to limit national energy consumption. TV broadcasts were also stopped at 10.30 each night, and most pubs were closed, again in order to try and curb energy usage. The minister has insisted that it will be business as usual this time, and described analogies to the 1970s as alarmist, unhelpful and completely misguided. Nonetheless, analysts expect gas prices to stay high for another three to four months over winter, which means that the crisis isn't going away anytime soon. As a final thing, some commentators have suggested that this is something to do with Brexit. Back in 2016, Johnson promised lower fuel bills post-Brexit, and that's not exactly how things have panned out. And while this issue is mainly down to the UK's particular reliance on natural gas and wind, the UK's high electricity prices have been exacerbated by Brexit. That's because the UK is connected to the EU via a whole load of interconnectors, which let electricity flow between mainland Europe and Great Britain. Pre-Brexit, the UK was part of the EU's internal electricity market, and more specifically, the EU's single-day-ahead coupling mechanism otherwise known as the SDAC. The SDAC is pretty complicated, but the basic idea is that electricity auctions throughout the EU are done by an allocation algorithm called EU PHE MIA, which basically meant that everyone shared electricity. So if the UK had more electricity than it needed, it would go wherever it was needed in the EU. But now the UK has left the EU, it's no longer part of SDAC, which means that instead of having its electricity allocated by an algorithm, it has to actually ask Europe for more electricity. Hypothetically, this could be good for the UK. When it's got more electricity than it needs, it can wangle higher prices out of the EU. But when the UK desperately needs electricity, the UK has to take part in what's known as explicit auctions. 
This has most likely exacerbated the already high wholesale electricity prices and goes some way to explain why the UK's wholesale prices are even more expensive than those in Europe. Regardless, there's no easy solution for the government here. Exposing the public to massively inflated bills would be politically deadly. Saving the companies would be expensive and might go down badly, but not saving them could cause a domino effect of collapse and market consolidation. But what do you think they should do? Comment your thoughts down below. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram for more TLDR content. You can follow just TLDR UK on socials or go wild and follow whichever TLDR accounts interest you. Anyway, following and sharing our posts not only gets you more from us, but it really helps us out too. So thanks a lot. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.